2nd of July, 1839. I received a letter today from the Algerian governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, wow. Let's just live here for a while, you know? Let's move in. With the hissing cockroaches. Oh, a broken lock. Okay. Challenge accepted. The nature of this text ranged from quick notes to colorful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages, trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, Herbert dryly states, recovered Daniel after one hour of entrapment. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion, but suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? It's a fake orb he has. Screw it! You don't need your drawers put back. Oh my god, I survived. That was 
one of the most terrifying things I have experienced yet. The important key is hidden in the guest room. Okay. Let's find that key. Find that key that unlocks. So it's probably this. It's that. Alright, let's find that key. done with this room. Fourth of July, 1839. It's done. The orb is assembled. I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare. Shaking and sweating, I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea. The relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them, but somehow I knew how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no adhesive. Oh, shit. The ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been molded by a factory. This is all too strange. That is pretty strange, bro. Anything else hidden here? No. I already checked these, yeah. I did, that was shirt. Alright. Time to go back. Go back on this way. He flipped through the Book of Monarchs, looking for etchings and counted. Nine different kings from all over Europe had been depicted with an orb resting in their hands. So, like, orbs of kings, I guess. Let's go... this way. Panted heavily, trying his best to keep himself from screaming. The medicine cabinet had been overturned. He lay collapsed on the floor. He reached to the broken glass and grabbed all the sedatives he could find. What a druggie. Just shooting up all the time. Come on. This is... Let's, uh, close this door. Oh, piece of paper. 5th of July, Oh, God, another diary entry. 
country. Today, I went to the university looking for answers. I was able to sneak into Herbert's office and pick up an address book along with some relevant textbooks. Professor Taylor at the Faculty of History was very helpful and I managed to approach the subject of the orbs. The most interesting aspect was the prevalent trace they had left in our culture. The mythic orbs may in fact have inspired the Globus Cruciger, which so many royal regalia holds to this day. In ancient times, the orbs were held by priests as a symbol of the sun and its power. As I was leaving, I overheard a disturbing conversation. Sir William Smith, the geologist, was killed last night. Less than a fortnight had passed since I'd asked for his expertise. I know it's silly, but I can't help feeling responsible somehow. You are. Totally are. What's that? Note that there are only two spare rods left in storage for elevator machinery. Make sure to only discard the ones which are badly damaged and keep the others in the inner study room inner, inner study rooms in case the three would crack again. Alright, so those are gonna go in there. Okay. So let's go get this cog wheel. Down stairs. Bang, 
racket. And we are there. More work. What am I even trying to do with this? Every book I can find on the subject. While rich in legend and hearsay, my knowledge is lack for the insight I crave. I've sent letters to many in Herbert's address book and received answers of varying importance. Today, I got one which differed greatly from the others. From a baron in Prussia. He said nothing about the quaint stories of priests in underground temples. He didn't even mention them. He simply wrote, I know. I can protect you. Come to Brennenburg Castle. Signed, Alexander. What am I to make of this? Protect me from what? Is someone after me? I looked up Brennenburg and traced it to the Prussian woods near the Baltic Sea. While being the least informative letter I've received, it causes me greatest distress and interest. As I write, my thoughts are drawn to my nightmares in which a most disturbing sound calls to me. A sound defying description. Oh, man. A voice from the void. The last few weeks have been awful, with so many sleepless nights dreading a repeat of those horrid dreams. Tomorrow, I shall visit my physician, Dr. Tate, in hope that he can provide me with sedatives to help me sleep. Sedatives won't help you not dream. Right to the next room, I propose. That's out. escaped me. They're all dead. Limbs scattered, head split down the middle, their skin flayed as if boiled. I feel like I'm falling into myself. What's happening? Sir William Smith, Professor Taylor, now Dr. Tate. Is it following me? How can it not be? It's the damn thing I brought from Africa. Something is after me. I have no choice. But to trust the Baron. He better know what he claims. If he is wrong, no, I suspect Baron's he'll regret it as guy. well. He just wants your shit. Okay, what's this going on here? Nothing of relevance to me. Uh, so this is like aqueduct pressure. Pressure. Sure. I know 
what set the pressure as. Study, rubble in the cave in. 